Yeah. Steamy hot. So it's about 140 degrees or so. It's pretty good. No, 42, 142 or so. All right, welcome to Hardcore Sustainable. I'm here today at Jennifer's house, which is also called the Timber Frame. And uh, she built an addition on the original Timber Frame, which is over there, uh, maybe like five, six years ago. And this house is pretty amazing. It's one of my favorite Dancing Rabbit houses. And it's got all these kinds of sustainable systems set up inside the house. Uh, I'm not gonna do a whole tour today, but I did want to give you a little bit of an overview of the evacuated tube solar hot water heating system and also do a little bit of maintenance on the pump on that system because the pump is not working anymore and we're going to do some troubleshooting find out what's going on with it and see if we can get it going again so just behind jennifer's house here is this uh, solar array of evacuated tubes and the way this works is there's a glass tube that's actually got a vacuum inside of it, so there's not even air uh, molecules in there, supposedly. And then it's got uh, sort of a collector in there that uh, absorbs the sun's heat and then uh, conducts that heat to the antifreeze that's flowing through a channel that goes down the middle of these tubes um, and the middle of the collector. And then that goes into a pipe that then goes inside, insulated pipe, and then it goes inside and it has a heat exchanger where it exchanges its heat, gives off that heat and heats up water in a tank. And that's the way you get hot water. And it um, doesn't have to be a super complicated system. It's fairly simple because it is just antifreeze flowing through these tubes. The tubes are complicated technology themselves and they are pretty delicate so you have to be careful because if one of these breaks it's really expensive. This system is also pretty expensive but once it's up and running you can have really hot water just from the sun. And you saw the solar cooker that I showed you earlier where you can just set that thing out in the sun on a cool winter day like today and you can have uh, temperatures up to like 300 degrees in like 10, 15 minutes. But it's technology like this that just proves that you don't really need fossil fuel uh, to do things like this. You don't need gas to be heating water up in your house. You can have a system like this, and if these things were produced on a larger scale, they would come down in price and be much more accessible to people. You could have one on every house, and then you wouldn't have to be using either electricity or most people use gas or something like that to heat their water. So it completely eliminates the need for fossil fuel in that way. These things are really powerful. That's also the reason why I'm keeping them covered because it's the pump isn't working right now and it's not circulating coolant through the system. We want to keep them covered. So right now they're not getting a lot of sunlight, so I'm going to cover them before they get too much sunlight here. The problem is that she says that the pump stopped working. The pump is not pumping the coolant through the system anymore. So we're going to take apart the pump and see if we can fix it because this thing costs 220 bucks or something. And it could be that the pump is just needing to be cleaned because it stops. It kind of could be gunked up with stuff. Okay, so if you can see, this is the line that the coolant runs through. It's got a shutoff valve over here and then another one over there. And the pump is located right in between there, inline pump. And so we're going to take this apart and see if there's something wrong with it. And we need to disconnect the power to it basically to get this thing off and then we'll uh, we'll take it apart. I'll take this off. Okay, you can definitely see that this pump is incredibly gooped up. Gosh, I don't even know if we can clean this out, but we're going to try. I'm not sure what we'd use. Okay, we're just going to try with warm water first. But it's interesting, I mean, the color of this stuff makes me think that maybe it was overheating and it was kind of frying the goop that was stuck in there. But I don't know. I mean, because the coolant, the antifreeze, is not going to be this color. And it seems like I'm probably going to need a solvent because it's not, it's not just coming off easily. And hopefully a solvent won't wreck the 
pump mechanism. It's definitely getting plenty of goop out of there. Can wipe it out better with some of this. Now let's clean this part out. This is of course the part that spins around and pulls the fluid through. Some kind of carbon or residue from the coolant. It's really gooped up in there. Definitely going to be a factor in whether it spins around in there or not. Okay, so we cleaned this up now and it's looking shiny and much cleaner than it was. Not gooped up with all sorts of crap. We're going to take this whole thing back to my house and it has the voltage on it says 8, 8 to 24 volts, which is what a 12 volt panel would produce. And so we're going to just take it back to my house and put it on 12 volts or something and see see if it makes it spin. And uh, if we cleaned it up and if that will make the difference as far as it working or not. And if it does, then we'll put it back in. And if it doesn't, it probably overheated at some point and, uh, and it might be fried. Here is our cleaned pump. Oops. Some of that moisture out of there. It's very magnetic. Oh, that just sticks right in there. So now, this is 24 volts right here. This is coming from my batteries. So we're going to just see how that works. Mm, oops, there it goes. Whoa. This must have come disconnected. So we'll have to go put this back on and hook it back up to the um, solar panel and see if it starts working. And uh, I think we're going to need to add some more coolant to that system because I ended up having to drain some of it out to get to this pump. We finally got some sunlight on this panel that's going into the pump and so we're going to go inside and we're going to reinstall that pump, hook it up, and then we're going to see if it runs. And then we'll probably have to put a little bit more of the antifreeze into the system because I did have to drain some out when I took off the pump. So I'm going to refill that fill it up and then get it circulating so that that uh, works more efficiently. So we're going to put this back on here. All right, so I just went out there and there is absolutely no sun on that panel, so it's not going to be generating any power anytime soon. I don't know when the sun falls on it. It's pretty low in the sky right now and there is like a lot of trees blocking the solar access to this array and this panel. So um, that has been something that uh, needs to be addressed. Probably would be best to put that whole array up on top of the, uh, on the roof of this house if that's possible. Uh, Cause then you don't have to worry about trees blocking your solar access. All right, so we finally got a sunny day and Got some power going into that pump in there, and so we're going to check out how it's going. So we should have power in here to this pump, and I have refilled the uh, coolant, the antifreeze that's in the, the line, so this should start pumping. So funny, because like two seconds ago it was working just fine. Okay, so... Nothing was happening and I went outside and there was a tarp that had in the meantime, like in the last two seconds, had blown over the solar panel blocking it. That's not good. Um, so anyways, here we go. Let's try this again. Okay. 
so it's pumping. Well, it doesn't exactly make no noise, but most of the noise is these pipes that are hanging down. It seems to be pumping and at least circulating the fluid though. So it seems like at least the pump is fixed. The question is, is it working as efficiently as it should because it's making all this noise? Um, but as far as I recall, it wasn't working at all before. So now it's at least working. I'll have to ask Jennifer if it's supposed to make this much noise. Okay, at least I got the pump going now and um, that's working as far as I know. I'll have to consult with Jennifer and find out exactly how this whole thing is supposed to work. But um, yeah, we got the pump going. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share and give a thumbs up to the video and check out the Instagram and Facebook pages for Hardcore Sustainable and we'll see you next time.